Hello, my students, and hello, everyone. This is Teacher Angel, and welcome back to our Intermediate Accounting online classes. For today, our lesson is all about revaluation. So, as we have learned in our previous lesson in PPE, there are two ways on how to to measure the PPE after recognition. We have the using the cost model and the or the revaluation model. For today, our focus is on measuring the PPE using the revaluation model. So at the end of this lesson, the student should be able to determine the requirements for the revaluation of PPE and compute the depreciation and carrying amount of PPE using the proportional and elimination approach of revaluation. So let's get started. Again, the measurement of the property, plant, and equipment uh, will depend on when you're going to recognize it or when you're going to measure it. If on initial measurement, we're going to measure the PPE, it will be measured at cost. Subsequently, we have the option to use the cost less accumulated depreciation and accumulated impairment losses, thus applying the cost model. But if we prefer to use the revalued amount, which is the fair value at the date of the revaluation, less any subsequent accumulated depreciation and subsequent accumulated impairment losses, then we are applying the revaluation model. So let's proceed to the application of the revaluation model. So how often are we going to revalue? So it depends upon the changes in the fair value of the PPE being revalued. There would be further revaluation necessary when the fair value of a revalued asset differs materially from the carrying amount. Annual revaluation would be needed for PPEs that experience significant and volatile changes, meaning the fair value changes uh, fluctuates. So, sigi o ilis ilisaka na o. For PPE with insignificant changes in fair value, so dili kaayo siya mag fluctuate ang iyahang fair values, you can uh, revalue those assets every three to five years. So when the PPE are revalued, the entire class of PPE should be revalued. What is this entire class? So a class of PPE is a grouping of the assets of similar nature and use in an entity's operation. For example, we have uh, properties involving land alone, so th that is one class of land. There are properties with both land and buildings, so that is one class, uh, land and buildings. Um, we have a group of machineries, group of ships, aircrafts, motor vehicles, furniture and fixture, and office equipment. So therefore, you are going to revalue, if you're going to revalue an item, like uh, a particular land, and it belongs to a group of land or a class of land, then you have to revalue all other lands in the same nature and use. So not only that one particular na property. So uh, therefore, pag nag-revalue ta sa isa ka property, dapat ang ubansad nga, same po siya nga nature nga land, same po nga klase nga property, i-revalue sad na to. So, the assets within a class of PPE are revalued simultaneously in order to avoid selective revaluation of assets and the reporting of amounts which are a mixture of cost and value at different dates. So, para uniform sila tanan. However, a class of assets may be revalued on a rolling basis provided revaluation of the class of assets is completed within a short period of time and provided the revaluations are kept up to date. 
where do we base our revaluation? So this is the uh, primary um, amount or data that we need to find in the problem. So it's either we compute that or it's given in the problem. So we have to get the fair value of the asset. So diba, uh, in revaluation, we are basing it on the revalued amount. And the revalued amount is based on fair value. And what is this fair value? This will be determined by appraisal normally undertaken by professional qualified valuers. So those uh, amounts, fair values that are given to us by our hired nga mga professional uh, valuers, muna siya ito ang i-assign as the fair value of the asset. Or if the fair value is not given, we need to find in the problem or we need to uh, get the data on the replacement cost and depreciate the replacement cost. So this is called as the depreciated replacement cost. So we should find or get data about the replacement cost and depreciate it. So, this is also called as the sound value. Okay. So, therefore, here are the formulas that you can use in order to determine the revaluation surplus. And what is this revaluation surplus? That is the a net increase in the value of the asset. Okay. So, how do we determine if there is a revaluation surplus? So, we need to compare the fair value and the carrying amount or the depreciated replacement cost and the carrying amount. So either kung na ang fair value, then use the fair value. If wala fair value, use the DRC or the sound value. After we get the difference, if the fair value is greater, Okay, the fair value is greater than the carrying amount, so there is a revaluation surplus. So the revaluation surplus na makumpute ani, either through the fair value as the basis or the DRC as the basis, that's the revaluation surplus that is gross of tax, meaning wala pa na deduct ang tax. So, if the, in the problem, the tax is given, then we can compute the tax, which is the revaluation surplus, gross of tax, times the tax rate. Okay? And that will be the answer that we're going to place here. And get the difference, that would be the revaluation surplus net of tax. So, this is the same whether we use the fair value as the basis or the DRC as the basis. If we're going to apply this one, how do we get the depreciated replacement cost? So, to get the depreciated replacement cost, we need to get the data on the replacement cost as I have mentioned earlier. So, dapat na atay replacement cost and then get the accumulated depreciation based on the replacement cost. Remember, how do we get the depreciation? So, di ba, pag mag-depreciate ta, so, the formula is the cost minus salvage value then over the useful life if that is straight line method. So, in here, this is based on the acquisition cost, katong historical cost niya. Uh, how much uh, is the, the price of the asset when it was bought? Uh, this time, when we compute for the accumulated depreciation here, we're going to use the replacement cost instead of the historical cost. So, meaning, na ay accumulated depreciation based on the historical cost, based on cost, and we also have the accumulated depreciation based on replacement cost. So, to illustrate, we have the following data. So, we have the data on the cost and the replacement cost of the machinery. So, compute the following. First is the carrying amount. So, how do we get the carrying amount? This is the formula. That's cost minus the accumulated depreciation. But this one is based on cost nisha. This is based on cost. So, we have 3 million minus 750. That's 2,250,000. 
Then, to get the appreciation, which means uh, how much ang gisaka, just get the difference between the um, cost and the replacement cost. So, kanis silang doha. So, to get the difference, so that would be 1 million 800. So, that is 1 million 800. So, therefore, manesha ang gisaka sa valuation sa asset if we're going to base it on the fair value okay yeah. next is what is the accumulated depreciation appreciation so well, how much is the increase of the accumulated depreciation so get the difference as well so you have 1 million 200 minus 750 you have 450,000 so that is the increase in the accumulated depreciation so if you're going to get the a uh, net revaluation surplus anania so get the appreciation okay appreciation on the replacement cost and appreciation on the accumulated depreciation so if you're going to get the difference here that would be 1 million 350,000 next is what is the depreciated replacement cost the drc or it is also called as a sound value so basing on the formula earlier Diba? Replacement cost minus the accumulated depreciation based on the replacement cost. But uh, they, these data are given. So, 4,800,000 and then minus 1,200,000. So, this is your depreciated replacement cost. Now that we have the DRC, we can now compare that with your carrying amount. So the sound value or the DRC minus the carrying amount, this is the revaluation surplus, which is also equal with how much we computed earlier. So the appreciation on the replacement cost and appreciation on the accumulated depreciation. So that is also our revaluation surplus so how are we going to present it in the sfp so the presentation in the sfp will now be based on the replacement cost and the depreciated replacement cost and the disclosure needed would be you need to present the cost of the machinery and the accumulated depreciation based on cost at the same time, you're going to present on the other column the replacement cost and the depreciated replacement cost. Now, there are two approaches in recording revaluation. We have the proportional approach and the elimination approach. So, in the proportional approach, the accumulated depreciation at the date of revaluation is restated proportionately with a change in the gross carrying amount of the asset so that the carrying amount of the asset after revaluation equals the revalued amount so this is the preferred approach meaning uh, the proportion in terms of the accumulated depreciation sa cost um, will be applied to the replacement cost so if for example ang Ang at cost, one-fourth na siya depreciated. So, for example, ang the base on cost that is already one-fourth depreciated, meaning one-fourth sa iyahang life na depreciate na siya, dapat at ang replacement cost sa is one-fourth po nga depreciated. So, proportional sila. Kung ang asset based on cost is half of the life of the asset na siya nag-depreciate in the same way nga ang replacement cost half po ang pag-depreciate meanwhile the elimination approach uh, what uh, it will do is that i-eliminate niya ang accumulated depreciation so tang-tangon niya i-debit niya si accumulated depreciation and what will be left is katong imuhang um account nga machinery, account ba na siya nga building. So, mawala si accumulated depreciation. The accumulated depreciation is eliminated against the gross carrying amount of the asset and the net amount restated to 
the revalued amount of the asset. So to illustrate, we have here the given. So unlike the previous problem, this time there's no amount for the accumulated depreciation based on replacement cost. The machinery was revalued five years from the date of acquisition. So five years na ang uh, nilabay before it was uh, revalued. So prepare the journal entries on the revaluation of the asset using the proportional and the elimination approach. So now we have to get the percentage that the asset is being depreciated. So here, ang gisulti lang niya is pila na ang expired, pila naman ang nilabay na years, but it did not provide us the total useful life of the asset. So kung five years na ang nilabay, ang revaluation is five years from the date of acquisition, then, how do we know kung pila ang iyahang total na useful life? So, we can compute that by uh, using the following uh, solution. So, we have here given ang accumulated depreciation. Uh, there's no residual value, so dili ka ayun siya complicated. So, we just simply divide 2 million by 5 years to get the annual depreciation. So, 2 million divided by 5 years every year, that would be 400,000 depreciation. So, if every year 400,000, and remember the formula to compute the depreciation, that's equivalent to cost minus salvage value over the total useful life. So, if this is given, okay, and this is given the 400,000, and there's no salvage value, but we have the cost. Okay, and this is what we're looking for, kaning x, kaning useful life. So, just cross multiply, that would be 8 million divided by 400,000. So, that would be total of 20 years. So, if 5 years na siya nag-depreciate, so that's 5 divided by 20. If the problem does not have any salvage value. Pwede lang po nga neon siya pag compute. So, your accumulated depreciation is 2 million and the cost is 8 million. So, the ratio here is uh, that's 2 over 8. So, this is 1 fourth or that would be 25%. That is pag walay salvage value. Pwede ra siyang automatic nga naon. So, if at cost it is 25% Depreci depreciated so the replacement cost as well should be 25 percent depreciated so therefore 12 million times 25 percent and that is equivalent to 3 million get the difference that's 9 million this is our sound value so compare the sound value and the carrying amount this is your revaluation surplus that is 3 million so, this is gross of tax. So, wala ginidak ang tax. If a tax rate is given, for example, 30%, you will get the 30% of the revaluation surplus. So, 3 million times 30%, that's 900,000. Okay, so what would be the entry if gross of tax, there's no tax rate given, so debit machinery, 4 million. Why is it a debit to machinery? Because the machinery is increased by 400, uh, 4 million. From 8 million, it became 12 million. So debit. Meanwhile, for the accumulated depreciation, you have increased by 1 million. So how do we increase the accumulated depreciation? We're going to credit the accumulated depreciation. And the balancing figure is our revaluation surplus. If we're going to uh, deduct the tax, the same debit machinery, credit accumulated depreciation, but the revaluation surplus earlier at 3 million would be uh, allocated to the deferred tax liability, which is equ equivalent to the revaluation surplus times the tax rate. Then the remainder is for the revaluation surplus. 
Now applying the elimination approach. So if that is elimination approach, we're going to eliminate the accumulated depreciation. But first, we still need to get the sound value. So remember the replacement cost is given and accumulated depreciation for uh, corresponding to the replacement cost is not given. So it proportionate gihapon siya. Nga 25%. Kahit nga ng 25%, 2 million divided by 8 million. So, 25% depreciated. So, 12 million times 25%, that's 3 million, and this is your sound value. So, this is the same with uh, what is computed ganiha kani. Then, the carrying amount is 6 million, so still the revaluation surplus gross of tax is 3 million. So, when do we eliminate? So, we eliminate in the journal entry. So, we remove the existing accumulated depreciation nga 2 million. So, debit accumulated depreciation. Then, credit the revaluation surplus that we have already computed. And the balancing figure, that's why this is squeeze, is debit to machinery 1 million. So, what will be the effect of this entry? Okay, so we're going to uh, adjust the amounts for the machinery and accumulated depreciation. This will what well, this will be the effect. Since the accumulated depreciation is debited, so ma decrease si accumulated depreciation. In effect, ma wala siya, so ma zero out. For the machinery, since this is debited, so eight million minus one million. I uh, sorry, sorry. 8 million plus there. 8 million plus 1 million. That's 9 million. Then the revaluation surplus here is 3 uh, million. Okay. So here, <clears throat> so this is not a sound value. Huh? Okay. I, this is correct. Eh? Revaluation surplus. So, the difference between the carrying amount and the sound value, this is your revaluation surplus. So, again, if there is a tax rate given, uh, then we're going to take out that tax. So, that's 3 million times 30%. If you like this video, don't forget to click like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell to be updated with the latest video lessons. Thank you for watching.